My name is Perry Yee. I served six years active duty with the Navy and I'm a former United States Navy SEAL. For the last five years, uh, I've been the CEO and founder of a nonprofit uh, in San Diego called Active Valor. And uh, what we do is we are like a big brother program where we take transitioning veterans and pair them as ongoing mentors to children that have lost a parent either overseas in combat or to um, PTSD related suicide while serving on active duty. And with our mission, uh, we host a series of very elaborate uh, and themed outdoor adventures within San Diego County. And uh, the, the big purpose behind it for us was to be able to give our veterans an opportunity to take their skill sets and knowledge that they've acquired from the military and their service and now be able to pass it down to children that have lost their connection to the military by losing you know, their, their, uh, their parent service and uh, being able to just continue that relationship between uh, the two communities and really focus around building relationships, building friendships, but also um, just building a community that, that helps serve one another. And uh, for me, being able to continue my service outside of the military was, was a big factor in my own, uh, kind of my own transition. Uh, I got out in 2011 and really didn't have any direction. I had no goals, I had no dreams, I had no aspirations. I was really um, just kind of stuck in my isolation and um, I was still in San Diego at the time. My entire family is back on the East Coast so there's really no support system as well. So it took me a couple years to kind of just find my path and what I think what it boiled down to for me was just not having that greater purpose, you know, not being, not, not serving something bigger than myself anymore. You know, coming from the military, especially from the special operations community, and to now I'm a civilian with, you know, no direction and really nothing to offer, or at least, you know, what we think when we get out is we have nothing to offer the community uh, anymore. So we wanted to really combat that issue of, you know, guys and gals getting out of the service and really showcasing that the country still needs you know their services and the, the communities really uh, rely on what they have to offer and so being able to you know take their skills and now uh, really in a positive and impactful manner translate that to you know something that's going to change someone else's life it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been a really a really big mission of mine but um, it's, a, it's it's been a huge blessing to myself, my my own psyche as well, and the and now to be able to, to see that grow and, and and help other you know veterans and Gold Star families, um, yeah, it's a real 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 blessing for me. Uh, when it comes to my personal hobbies, there aren't many, but um, the, the, the few that I have, I try to do as much as I can, um, especially when you know it comes to uh, when you have that downtime and you're trying to really work on your mental health and, and just getting out there and you know doing what you enjoy doing. Um, uh, one of them is, is continuing to train. Uh, when I got out of the service, you know, it took a couple years for me to kind of fall back in line with, you know, doing what I was doing in the military as well. And um, in 2014, I started uh, training at a, a CQB school in uh, Escondido, which is in, in San Diego County. And um, it was um, my first, I would say my first interaction with being around other veterans since I had discharged from the military. And um, it was a really 
eye-opening for me to be able to, to come into the space with all these like-minded individuals, guys from different backgrounds, and uh, but all, you know, whether whatever branch they served in, you know, we had all come from, you know, the, the same community, the same family. And uh, just being able to kind of correlate, you know, what we did in the service and now uh, being able to, to continue, continue to train with one another. Uh, we were training military, we were training law enforcement and civilians as well in a, in a close quarters battle. But um, since then, you know, it was it was something that I needed that spark and to, to have that enjoyment back. And so ever since then, you know, I try to get out and, and train as much as I can, whether it's it's on the range shooting or um, in a shootout, doing some force and force training. Um, I actually just, just started my own business in San Diego where I'm actually teaching home defense um, in people's homes. So I'm, I'm taking my services to them and, and teaching them how to clear their house, how to, to have uh, properly been able to get their firearms and, and just get them comfortable with, especially with the, you know, what's what's happening around us in our, in our country and, and outside of our country as well. But um, just trying to make people as safe as possible and, or, and feel as safe as possible and, and confident that you know, they would have the ability to protect themselves and their families um, during these challenging times. And um, yeah, it's something that brings me a lot of joy. I don't get to do it enough, but uh, when I do now, it's, it's I try to savor those moments as much as I can. And my biggest hobby today, I would have to say, is one wheeling. You know, I, got, I got a one wheel back in uh, August of this year. Nope, it's not this year. We're in 2022, August of last year. And uh, man, it changed my life. It's, uh, I, I, I push on everybody I, I, I talk to as well. I mean, it's just getting out there, hopping on this thing, cruising, riding trails, riding the beach, riding neighborhoods. Um, but also, there's a big community in San Diego that, that all ride together. So um, literally, I'm, I'm on that thing every day. Uh, once a week in big groups going on rides and stuff, but uh, man, it's just it's so freeing and I highly recommend everybody get on one. Trust me. You'll thank me. <laughs>
I think for me it was I was just trying to prove something to myself. You know, I was trying to to, to build up that self-esteem and that confidence in myself. And you know, if I if I can make it through this, I can do anything. Worked pretty hard, um, obviously, to make it through. And uh, you know, getting to the SEAL teams was probably one of the you know the most proud moments I had in my life. And um, yeah, just being able to experience that and serve with some really good people and being able to I served in. Uh, in Afghanistan and uh, Operation Enduring Freedom and just being able to um, to have that opportunity to to know that you're doing something you know on such a grand scheme like that um, it was really it was it was humbling um, you know there's some good times there's some bad times and um, but I think what I take away most is is where I am today what, I am, what I'm doing today uh, who I am as a person you know things I've learned um, mistakes I've learned from and now being 11 years out of the service, and uh, yeah, yeah, I look back on it a lot, and I'm, I'm you know, thankful I was I was able to kind of stick it out and, and take that route and uh, um, be able to you know serve my country in that capacity, but also to um, internally be able to kind of achieve that goal and to be able to um, kind of you know climb that mountain and, and get to the top of it. It was just you know it's something that that will, has molded me for the better, and uh, super grateful for. Three, four. I heard about hardhead veterans through the internet, through Instagram, I believe. And um, let's see, I had actually been contacted uh, through Mike with, with Hardhead and him and I actually are, we work with other brands in the industry as well and um, so we kind of had that connection, you know, we hadn't met before but we had that connection and uh, so he reached out and kind of you know, talked to me about the, the brand and then uh, what Hardhead Veteran stands for and what, what they do, what the product's like and um, so I was, I was thrilled, man, it was, it was really cool to, to work with a company that has a solid mission that is veteran owned and operated, you know, especially for me, the veteran communities is, is my life, you know, especially with the nonprofit. Um, so I, I really like to dive into and support other brands that are um, operated by guys like myself and um, who serve, to, to continue to serve uh, their community and the, and the uh, industry that they're in. Uh, initial thoughts on the Gen 2, man, I, I got that uh, last year, so uh, I think middle of uh, 2021 and immediately took it out and I was, I found some time to go hit the range and do some running and gunning and uh, you know I hadn't worn any type of helmet, especially ballistic helmet in a decade, so it was funny putting it on, it was like putting on the uniform again, <laughs> but being able to uh, to just really you know test it out and see how it felt. I mean, the the fit was great. Um, something's hard for me. I have a tiny head, so it's hard finding hats, finding helmets, things like that. And uh, but yeah, mission, initial thought was was this thing is is pretty baller. And uh, you guys probably get it a lot, but the quality of what you get with with Heart of Veterans and the price point that it's at, you have a lot of you have a lot of stuff that you're covering which isn't offered in other places and so um, I think for me being able to have one you have a quality company of some solid people um, with you know some pretty awesome backgrounds that are continuing to work for their community but um, building a product that is something that's going to be life-saving and something that's going to be comfortable affordable um, something that uh, people can be proud to, to wear and support and so it's yeah I, I love it and um, Super happy to be a part of it.